ball right here on Valentine's Day evening and where would you rather be with your sweetie with your honey than at the freakers ball on valent on a Valentine's Day let me ask you that <laughs> uh, or not with your honey just with your loved ones here at RLM yes all your loved ones at RLM are right here with you this evening this Valentine's Day evening on Friday, February 14th, 2020, welcome, one and all, I am Grimner. Moose Girl, I believe, will be along shortly. She didn't say she wasn't going to be here, so I assume she'll be around before too long. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. You never know with that Moose Girl. She's a wild one. She's a real wild child. Uh, any, anyways, <laughs> yeah, um, hi and howdy to all the folks out there listening in all the various places you may be listening from. Uh, whether that be right here on reallibertymedia.com on the Freakers Ball show page or possibly over on vaughn.live slash reallibertymedia. Uh, you could be listening in from freedomsnetwork.com or realliberty.org or tune in or any of those places. Maybe you're just checking us out on your VLC audio player. Some of y'all do that. I know that. I do know that. <laughs> so anyway, welcome to everybody out there in the ether. But come on over. Come on over. Jump in the chat. Be be part of the crowd because, uh, you know, it's it's a fun crowd and, and you'll enjoy having a good old time hanging out over here, uh, chatting with the folks here in Real Liberty Media. We always have a pretty decent group. It's kind of a small group tonight. Maybe some people are actually out on the town with their honeys. I don't know. But uh, it's smaller than normal crowd here, I would say. But we got the, we got the great we got the great folks still. We got the barman, uh, the f folks in the bots, the barman and Beetle and Cowboy Tech, uh, myself. And the Moose, Moose Girl's not checked in right now. We got Miss Kate. Hey Kate, how you doing? Cowboy Tecker, man, you guys anti. Hey anti. <laughs> as as the mo. Uh, Chalcedony, Circle, Circle, the Circleen, uh, the damn Van Meter, uh, Frumpy, the Frumpster, uh, Java Doctor Prince, who um, did not quite make his show last evening. He had some stuff going on, personal stuff. He couldn't make it. We got Rob Works and the Mighty Bubla. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Uh, Rome's Mr. Rome's out there in Ohio land. Um, <laughs> Rome's. Uh, Vanna and Weatherdork, uh, the Phantom, CC66, Cyborg Noodle, the noodliest, the noodliest cyborg you ever did see, E-Man and End of Silva, JJ's, uh, they have uh, Valentine's Day over there in Scotland, you know, I'm betting they do, uh, and Kiss, uh-huh, 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 Ponesauce and Sock Puppet and SLC Mike up there in the great state of Utah. Spot ass, the holiest Rogers, Zippix, uh, Chloe. Hey, Chloe, how you doing out there? I know you're out there. I know you're listening. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, so that's all the people that I see that are listening. There's others out there. We don't know who they are or where they're at, but come on over. Jump in the chat. You'll have a good old time. It's fun over here on RealLibertyMedia.com in this chat room. And I wanted to mention, first off, uh, before getting into anything, thank you all. Thanks to every one of you. A every last one of you. We have met our donation uh, numbers uh, requirement. Now, if anybody still wants to continue donating, feel free. Uh, we could always use extra money here at Real Liberty Media. And uh, so, yeah, if you want to continue donating, I... I'd be greatly appreciative of that, but there's not a need presently because we have passed our mark of $380 and have come up to a total of $396.33. And, <laughs> and I'll just, I don't want to give you everybody's full names or anything like that, but I'll, I'll just tell you that uh, the, the people, the people that donated, and I'm, I'm greatly appreciative of them all, um, we got the Cirque, we got the Donna, we got Veronica, uh, we got Michael of somebody, Sock Puppet, yes, yes, Sock, 
Craig, uh, some company, I guess, PWRBX, Inc. So thanks, whoever you are. Uh, Suzanne and David and Matthew and Gina and Carl and Spike Love and Philip and Romes and Anti and, again, Veronica, again. She, uh, she not, she's, she's done, did very well. I mean, uh, very, very thankful to her. And there are uh, lots of other people that donated in other ways that, um, don't, don't go to the, uh, necessarily paying of the bills. Well, some do. Like Grammy. Grammy donates every single month. She puts in 20 bucks every month, goes directly to our Spreaker account, and that pays the Spreaker bill. Uh, Vincent Easley, Vin E, uh, has been, uh, up until he had his medical episode, um, putting in 20 bucks every single month. Boom, boom, boom. And, uh, yeah, great appreciation for that, Mr. Vinny. And he does shows. He comes on here. He's a broadcaster. And we got lots of other people in here that are broadcasters, too, that come on and they donate their time and their effort and their brain power uh, to doing things here. Um, and and just, just looking quickly through the list. Uh, here of those that do, I see a possible future one, Miss Manmeter, uh, also possible circle, but uh, those are only possibles. We don't know anything about them yet. Uh, Moose Girl, who's not actually here at the moment, uh, but uh, yeah, she does, absolutely. Uh, we, we got we got uh, the Prince, of course, Prince does. Um, uh, Flash somebody, he's not here at the moment, but uh, he's sleeping. He's over there in Denmark, you know. It's a different. It's a different time of day. Uh, we Rob works, man. Rob works pops on there. Says, you know, uh, he did his show for a little while there. Now he now he randomly comes on. He he did a show on uh, Tuesday there with Flash. Good stuff. Um, who's not here in the list? Oh oh, uh, <laughs> Lonnie Lonnie uh, Hal Hal Anthony. Uh, so yeah, Lonnie Clark Hal Anthony. Others that uh, you know go on and do the shows, man. Uh, you're awesome. And other people here in the chat that have donated other things that shall not be mentioned upon this uh, broadcast. You know who you are. Very, very much appreciated there. Um, <laughs> and the rest of you that, I mean, you know, if you if you don't have funds and you, you just like hanging out with us and chatting uh, and, and you can't really, don't have the capabilities to do shows or you just don't feel like it, awesome. You, uh, you know, you're here, you're hanging out, and uh, yeah, we, we love you all for that. It's uh it's that lovely, that lovely uh, Valentine's Day thing, you know. You gotta spread the love, spread the love out there to all y'all. <laughs> yes, yes. And then there's the Christmas cookies. Oh yeah. All right. Anyway, um. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for that. It, it, it's been wonderful. I um. Uh, well, never mind. I'll I'll save that for later. <laughs> Hmm. I'll just say that there has been a sampling of the wares, <sighs> but I'll save it for later because uh, we'll see how that works out. All right. Um. Ba 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 ba. What else do I have to tell you about? Uh, anything new? Interesting? Exciting? Uh, server bills are paid. Um. So that's good and. Uh, we're we're set for you know we're good for another year, um, and I I'm very happy about that because uh, it, it was a concern it was a little concern but as usual y'all came through and yeah awesome and this is Mister Meisterbrow the Woodman all right <laughs> so we're gonna start off this this evening's musical set with uh, oh well you'll see. <laughs> Yeah, that's a little fun stuff for y'all. All right. So here we go. <laughs> yeah, I made that video uh, 10 years ago, a little over uh, January 6, 2010. Um, my buddy Bob Marley, not Bob Marley, <laughs> Hank Marley, uh, made that song and put it out there and made it available for uh, people to uh, listen to back in the old days, back at mp3.com was a thing in the late 90s. Uh, anyway, so uh, Hank Marley, Roll a Bob Marley. Uh, prior to that, we had uh, Ronald Reggae uh, doing All You Need Is Weed. That's the part two of that song. That's, that's the song. The first part of All You Need Is Weed is kind of like a 
discussion of you. All you need, all you need is weed. And we kicked it off there with Afro Man doing Because I Got High, the positive remix. Uh, and it was kind of a, a, a little bit of an ad there for something called Weed Maps, which I don't even know if Weed Maps is still around. That was, that was back in 2014 when that came out, so uh, I, I don't know if Weed Maps is still a thing. But if it is, yeah, it's cool, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got kicked it off with some uh, nice uh, weed smoking uh, videos there to get everything uh, going. Uh, I imagine Moose Girl will be calling in quite shortly. Uh, uh, pretty soon. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, yeah. Um, for those of you that weren't here at the beginning who didn't hear, yes, we have met our goals for fundraising for February for for 2020. So thank you all for that once again. And uh, again, if you uh, still want to um, donate, uh, please, please, please do. Please, please do. Is that right, Miss Moose? Ain't that right? Hello, what else? That is right. Yeah, that is right. If you, yeah, we've met our goals, but you can still donate this this month or any time there throughout the year. <laughs> donate any old time. We yeah, don't care. Yeah, no, we love we'll it. We'll take it. We love it. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, we we have, we we have yes. hit the goal and and once again just thanks. To awesome. Everybody. Thanks to everybody for that. Thank uh, you everybody that donated. Yeah. You are awesome. You are. You are bitching. Totally bitching. bitching. Totally bitching. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, it's going good. How are you doing? Uh, hanging in there. Yeah, the uh, made it another week. Made it through another week of hell. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The, the interwebs. The it interwebs. wasn't hell, but it, uh, the, the interwebs. But, the interwebs fell out on you. Yeah, they did. It keeps happening. I have to call Spectrum tomorrow, apparently, and bitch them out. Yeah, well, I'm sure they know and don't care. <laughs> no, like I was just telling Matt, because I was yeah. bitching about it. I'm yeah. like, dude. You know what happens when you call saying that your internet cut out and has been like doing it like every day, like intermittently, uh, once in a while, and they'll be like, they'll, oh, let me do a check. Oh yeah. no, I don't see any outages in your area. It's like right. you're telling me I'm lying. Well, it, it, I'm not lying here, dude. I'm telling you, my fucking internet keeps cutting out. Right. You know, and it's not my system. You know, I, I'm like, man, I just gotta reset the modem. No, don't do that. Like, I'll reset the router. No, don't do that. Don't do anything. Oh. I'm like, fuck you, dude. Yeah, I'd love to try some ayahuasca, guys. There. Oh, yeah, I would, uh, too. Yeah. Hell, yeah. But, uh... I did that on shrooms, though. I spoke with aliens on shrooms. Okay, cool. Yeah, I did. It was looking awesome. They were giving me all this fucking information and shit. I was like, I'm like, you guys really trust me? They're like, yeah, we know you're good. I'm like, hey, cool. Mike, how you doing, man? <laughs> So like we know you you can accept this information. Like you'll take it in, you'll believe us. Like you know, <laughs> they can tell that about me. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. They can tell. They, they can, can tell. They, they can, can read tell. your mind. They know. They know. They do. Yeah. They don't communicate the way this, the same way we do. Well, of course not. Why bother with this this vocal stuff, man? I, right. I mean, really. I mean, come <laughs> on now. I'll tell that telepathy is where it's at, dude. Absolutely. I mean, come on. So We're much, behind the times as humans, dude. You, Sorry, you, you we get, are. You can get so much more information across without, you know. Right. Yeah. And your meaning and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like they understand. Like, yeah, it's pretty something else. It is. But uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has them. And they all stink. Like they do. <laughs> Most of them. Uh, anyway, uh... Yeah, the therapeutic value of marijuana has been proven to be a very therapeutic and uh, very helpful and beneficial drug to human beings, which a lot of people have known this for a long fucking time. Basically, since the beginning of time, people have known this, okay? Yeah. But for some reason, weed was singled out as a bad thing. Oh, my God. Uh, we and know. We yet, know. We all know. Tobacco, smoking tobacco is still a thing. Uh, we all know and all the reasons why. Right. Yeah. So anyway, 
We were having a discussion last night in the chat room about homelessness a little bit. Okay. And even here in Eau Claire, we have a problem with it. Like, there's not enough beds for all the homeless people that we have here. Right. Which really, the reason I brought this up in the chat is because it was brutally cold here last night. Like, I'm talking below zero, below zero wind chill, like a 30 below wind chill, okay? I mean, this shit will kill you, right? Sure. This shit will kill you if you're out in it too long, okay? You will fucking die if yeah. you're in the cold too fucking long. Anyway, um, people are talking how some people with the lifestyle. I get that. Like... I do get it because it's really fucking hard. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people are mentally ill or addicted to drugs. Right. Bad drugs. Right. Okay? Bad right. drugs like heroin, meth, you know, what have you. Sure. And so, but my, I do know that there is help out there, but that's having to go to the services, right? And yeah. a lot of people don't want to deal with those people. Right. You don't want to deal with the services people, you know, because they think they're going to get in trouble or something, you know. Yeah. A lot of these homeless people, they don't want any paper on them. They don't want anybody to know about them, a lot of them. You know what sure. I mean? Sure, They just kind of want to be out there and be homeless, I guess. Yeah. But to me, I've se I would die if I would have stayed had to sleep outside last night. Okay. Right. I would have fucking died. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, no, maybe not. Like, I'm more resourceful than that. Like, I would have made a fire or something, you yeah. know, but yeah. like, I'm watching this homeless guy. Or he, he might not have been homeless, but he looked like he was homeless, but maybe he wasn't. But he's out in front of Quick Trip. He's got a fucking walker. You know, one of those walkers. Right. So he goes on a Quick Trip before me, and he's actually holding the door for me with his walker. And I'm like, dude, that's not, and I'm thinking, wow, well, okay, you know, thank you, I said. And then I'm getting in my car, and he's standing in front of the quick trip still with his walker and everything, smoking a cigarette, and he's literally shaking. Like, he's literally, like, shaking. Like, he can barely smoke the cigarette because he's so fucking cold that it's just like, dude, we're, why are you here right now, you know, at quick trip when it's just fucking cold out, you know? But he might be homeless. I don't know. It's hard to tell, you know? Yeah. But you feel so bad, and you're like, oh, I don't know how anyone can survive this cold. Like, they have warming centers that they open when it gets, like, below zero and shit. Right. But still, even then, they don't, they fill up quickly, you know? Sure. I, I mean, a lot of people, I think, are homeless, but they don't aren't living on the street. They're homeless, but they're living with relatives or living with friends. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But how how can you? The problem is not easily fixable at all because there's so many elements to it. You right. know, the mental health, the mental illness part of it, the drug issue part of it. You know, the drug drug thing. It, it, it's just so hard to overcome it. And like Rome's was saying, a lot of people choose that lifestyle. Sure. You know, and it works for them. But seriously, if I was going to do that and cho choose that lifestyle, it would not be in Wisconsin. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Still there? Did we lose you? Hello, hello? All right, I don't know where she went. She she made a, there was a little, little noise, and then she faded away. What? Uh, oh, there you are. You're back now. How did that happen? Oh, what happened? I don't know. You It was like a little weird noise, and then you faded away. Oh, sorry. I thought, I don't know I, what I, happened. I, thought I lost you. Oh, no, I'm yeah. still here. All right. All right. So, yeah, that was just some thoughts that I had tonight. And um, the problems are not fixable easily, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, at all. They are not. And, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely go to San Diego. <laughs> right. <laughs> You but, know, you know, there's a lot of rich people there. Rich people hate homeless people, dude. Uh, they yeah, fucking hate them. There's a lot of homeless there, so. Is there? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I want to go to an overpopulated homeless place, though. Yeah, but, you know, it's warm. It, it's it's Right, it's warm. That's the main. You're not going to freeze. Mean... To, you're not going to freeze to death in San Diego. Right. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, since we were talking about the marijuana earlier, I brought up this yes. article. And you recall, if you do recall, in my 
predictions for 2020, I said that marijuana would be legalized here in New Mexico. And? Not going to happen. Oh, Not going to happen. So here is the article. Wait, that, New Mexico government, you suck. New Mexico <laughs> governor, you suck, dude. You well, it's not, it's, suck. Not, it's, it's not the governor at this point. It's, it's Okay, well, whoever is involved in it, you it's, suck. It's, it's the Congress, you know, the Senate and the House of Representatives. They, um, and they all they, suck. They, basically the Senate that, that, that yeah. just did. Anyway, so bill to legalize recreational marijuana in New Mexico likely dead in committee. They still they still have a few more days left, but it doesn't. They're not focusing on it. They're not looking at it, so it doesn't look very good. So um, it's got nothing to do with me voting, Dorkhead. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. If there wasn't a vote on it, Dork. Yeah, I, you know. Oh my God. So anyway, supporters say temporary defeat will only make proposed legislation better, but will it? Uh, it w whether it will no. or whether it won't, I mean, it is definitely going to happen eventually, uh, but yeah. not this year. But part of the deal this year was they were going to release um, all the uh, non-violent pot smokers and you know pe people that had pot uh, from from right. the jail. They want to keep them in the system because they so, make money so, off the people. So they'll. So they'll be in there for at least an additional year, and, right. and so you can't make a you can't make a a, a, a rose out of that turd. Anyway, no, no. So it says here it was backed by the governor, a vast majority of the state's population, and had even been reviewed by a committee in January. It had like seventy five percent approval by the people. Oh um, wow, yeah. Uh, but now it appears the there will be no further movement. Right, because they don't like the people's choice. They don't want what the people want. Oh. They want to do what they want to do, even though it's supposed to be the other way around. It, it, it comes down to, at least that what they're saying it comes down to, is the fact that, well, we can't prove who's high on the road or not. Well, oh, you, my God. Well, that you, old argument? If, if, what about if, drunk drivers do it? <laughs> well, if you, can't, if you can't prove it, then what's the big deal? <laughs> right. They're not causing any harm. Obviously, a drunk driver, you can see a drunk driver. You can tell a, dri a drunk driver from yeah. a distance. But, but you, you, know know? What they, you, know what, you know what they did pass? What? Red flag law. Which is? That's that's the thing where anybody could say, this guy has guns and I don't like him, so go take his guns away. What? That well, This he, is the Third Reich. Uh, it, it's awakening. The Third well, Reich it, has been alive and well here it's, it, yeah, they've since passed, 1945. They, they've done that in many states, but New Mexico really, really wanted to have that bill put through. I bet they did. They got oh, some they, hard-ass they, fucking they, 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 jack they, they with thugs there. So, uh. They got some hard ass motherfuckers in costumes there. Oh, you bet you they do. Um, they got them jack boots. And they, <laughs> they're badasses, dude. So so They want they wanna bust your fucking ass. They wanna rough you up or kill you. Hell yeah. Anyway, they'll kill so, you. They'll uh, shoot you dead, not blink an eye. They don't care. So it'll be at least another year. Unless something unless unless something magic happens over the weekend, uh, I think uh, no. I think the session ends Tuesday or fucking Wednesday. magic. Um, uh, so fuck them, fuck those people, fuck them. <laughs> or or in in the words of Ashley Roachclip, <laughs> oh, all you all you all you motherfuckers out there that think marijuana should be legalized. Well, you're all fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no kidding. You're all stupid, too. Oh, well, yeah, that, too. All right. So, anyway, and on, on the heels of that, and not quite so... Um, I, hear, I, hear, I hear sirens. Anyway, um... I hear uh, sirens, too, in the background. They're coming for you, Grim. Yeah, I know. From Arm the, up, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned. From the pain, <laughs> PainNewsNetwork.org. The feds incinerate 28 tons of Kratom. What? Kratom, those which fucking is... fucking bastards, those idiots. Kratom, which is perfectly legal. Right, what the fuck, assholes? So, anyway, over, over 28 tons of the herbal supplement Kratom were recently destroyed by the federal government. The final chapter in a legal battle over one of the largest seizures of Kratom in history. Oh, my God. U.S. Marshal's office paid a hazardous waste company nearly $30,000 to transport the Kratom from South Carolina to Florida, where it was incinerated in an energy from waste facility. The Kratom had an estimated value of a million dollars. 
Kratom is a dietary supplement that millions of Americans use to self-treat their chronic pain, anxiety, depression, and addiction. It comes from the leaves of a tree that grows in Southeast Asia, where Kratom has been used for centuries as a, nat Hello? As a nat natural stimulant and pain reliever. Uh, the they want you to be in pain. They don't want you to have pain reliever no, that no, they, they didn't make. They want you to take those opioids. That's what they want. Yep. They want you addicted to that shit so you'll be all fucking crazy and shit. The incinerated Kratom was seized in 2018 after FDA <laughs> inspectors found large quantities of Kratom powder and, oh, cap no. and capsules at a warehouse in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Oh, no. Er operated by Earth Kratom, a wholesale producer and vendor. At what the time... Powerful. At the time, the federal and government was engaged in a public relations campaign against Kratom, led by FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb, scumbag. Uh, federal officials claimed Kratom was risky and addictive substance that should not be used to treat any medical condition. And we know better. Just ask Java Doctor. He took it for a good while there. He may still be taking it. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway... Yeah. Um, they don't like it. It was never made illegal. They never made right. a, 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 uh, rule, a regulation against it. Uh, the FDA never made a regulation against it. They right. just don't like it. They don't like it. Why? Yeah, what, so what's the problem, though? What? what? Oh but to God. steal, to it's steal, insane. stupid, to, to steal a million dollars of somebody's product, and then right. they said, "Well, it's it's we're we've confiscated this, but we're keeping it in your warehouse." So it took up half this guy's warehouse. For Jesus like a year and a half, um, and 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 they took a million dollars of his products, and they tried to drive him under, but he survived. His company's still up and going, and yes, Good. Mike, you could still buy Kratom all over the place. Um, yeah, and, and, there, and there was this was totally, uh, totally illegal for them to do this, uh, but but of course nothing bad will happen to them over this. Um, no. <laughs> it's just insane. It is. But they they could just do this. They could do this and get away with this. Uh, but they but they do. But they do. They can do whatever they want. This is the Fourth Reich. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, it's like living in the fourth, Third Reich. But there may be a fix coming. Oh, really? This weekend, tomorrow. Oh shit. What? <laughs> What's supposed to Genius said the end of the world's happening tomorrow. <laughs> NASA. Um, <laughs> yeah. Na Nazi. Uh, asteroid larger than any man-made structure to hurl past Earth uh -oh. on, on February 15. Oh, so, no. Be afraid. So the asteroid bigger than any man. Go fuck man your brains out, people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, you should do that Go anyway. Go fuck your brains out. Do, do that anyway. Anyway, asteroid yeah. <laughs> bigger than any man-made structure is hurling towards Earth at a speed of 34,000 miles per hour. NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies has said that the potentially hazardous asteroid could come into contact with Earth on February 15th, 2020, at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's about uh, 5 a.m. for you, 4 a.m. for me. So uh, you'll you'll be nicely sleeping, hopefully, by then. And all of a sudden, boom, and yeah. the, earth, the earth is shaking. All right. Or fucking. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, or, no, or probably fucking. Probably sleep, most likely sleeping, though. Yeah. So, Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so NASA has also confirmed that the asteroid will most likely miss the Earth by just a few million miles. Of course. Well, well that's that's quite the gap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you saying it might come in contact with the Earth, and then you're saying it's going to miss by a few million miles? So, yeah. but, Hello. So, 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 something, this is not copacetic. The truth is, is they don't fucking know. <laughs> so, so now that, now that you got your uh, Space Force, you can, <laughs> you can, oh my God. you can send Buck Rogers out there, or whoever the hell you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh my freaking oh, God. Oh man, I, I tell you. So, the end of the world is when? I don't know. Always tomorrow. 
I'm, yeah, always. It's always, always tomorrow. Always fucking tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. These geniuses that can, you know, predict the predict oh, the future. Man. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Anyway, that's on India TV News dot com there. For you. Okay, so I found this website, and it kind of. I was looking for something in particular. That's how I found this website. All right. I was looking for information on Operation Paperclip. Okay. And I came across this website called ScareNormal.com. I think it's a catchy website. Free, you know, name. Yeah, sure. Scare Normal. Anyway, yeah, Scare Normal. Like, they're going to scare you with all this normal documented information. Um. Anyway, it's got home. It's got conspiracies. It's got paranormal. It's got spirituality. It's got more. So I just thought that was kind of... But anyway, I'll, I'll post... Let me just go home first. I'll post that. Anyway, you can check it out. It looks kind of, like I said, I haven't delved into this. I don't want any hate email or anything. <laughs> um, anyway, um, uh, Operation Paperclip. This is by Steer Normal. Is there a date? I don't see a date on the story. Yeah, some people don't. Right. Anyway. Um, Operation Paperclip, also known as Project Paperclip, was an operation by the Joint Intelligence Objectives Ob- Agency, which was a CIA before the CIA existed. Okay. Right. Um, carried out by the Special Agency of Army CIC during the terminus and aftermath of, the, of World War II. The United States and its allies started the, the operation with the aim of finding and preserving German weapons, including chemical and biological agents. Yeah. However, the American scientific, scientific intelligence officers realized that the weapons themselves were not sufficient. They decided that the U.S. also had to bring all the Nazi scientists into the United States. Therefore, they launched a mission to recruit, not really recruit, but they're like, Stay here, come with us, and you, we'll, we'll shelter you. We'll give you, you know, you won't be prosecuted, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. We just want your sh- knowledge, right? Right. That's what they say, but they decided the U.S. also had to bring all the Nazi scientists into the United States. Therefore, they launched a mission to recruit Nazi chemists, okay. physicists, and doctors who went ahead to design the rockets that took man to the moon. What was the motive behind it? The primary purpose was the U.S was the United States military advantage in the Soviet Union space race in the Cold War. It's believed that the Soviet Union recruited more than 2,200 German specialists, a total of more than 6,000 people, including family members, on October 22, 1946. Right. Anyway, um, it's true, documented fact. You can dispute it all you want, but it did happen. Werner von Braun, there were about 1,600 Nazis that they gave uh, shelter to here right after the World War II. Right. Anyway, a lot of people don't aren't even aware of that. Sure. People would dispute that. It's documented fact. I mean, that's what cracks me up about these people. Oh, that didn't happen. Yeah. They wouldn't have done that. It's like, you're fucking fooling yourself, dude. It's documented fact. Yeah. You can dispute it all you want, but to dispute it would be stupid because it happened. Absolutely. It's like, wake up. It fucking happened. <laughs> Prescott Bush was a, no- a banker for the Nazis. Yeah. I mean, the stuff, If you once you fucking scratch the surface, you just keep scratching and it keeps going deeper, deeper, deeper. It's all connected, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. And, uh, eh, you know, people don't want to know, then they, they won't know. They'll bury their head in the Right. Head. They remain ignorant, and it works for them, I guess. But Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, the significance is, is think about what you know about the Third Reich, okay? Not and much. And think about what you know about what's going on right now here in this country. Not much. <laughs> you don't? You don't know much about it? I, I, I don't want to know. About the Third Reich? I, I, yeah, I, I don't know that much. You about can't the Third imagine Reich. what it would have been like living there, like no. being a Jew. That would have been horrible, yes. Yeah, I mean, so now it's not just the Jews, it's 
them, and us. Okay? All Most right. of the people that listen to the show are not one of them. No, there's nobody listening to the show is one of them. Right. <laughs> well, we don't know who's all listening. We can't make that assumption, Grim. Uh, that's true. But I'm sure we they cannot make that assumption. Uh, I'm sure they'd pay somebody else to listen. They don't want. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear it. <laughs> oh god! All right, we're gonna do another set here. Okay. Uh, and this is an all chick set. All, all right. chicks, chicks baby. Rule chicks rock. Chicks do rule. All right, this is from. Um, Beth, Haley, and Imelda. Not, not, not all at the same time. Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Individually. <laughs> Beth Hart, Imelda May, and Haley... Reinhardt. Okay, all right. Enjoy, people. All right, this is Beth here. Oh, yeah, she's a wild woman. <laughs> there, Imelda May. Uh, three, three hot lovelies. Uh, super talented women, every single one of them. Amelda May doing Wild Women. Uh, Haley Reinhardt there covering Seven Nation Army. Uh, just, yeah, amazing. And uh, Beth Hart doing Bang Bang. Boom Boom. Now, I noticed it there in the chat during that last set, uh, SLC Mike saying that uh, he listened to this uh, album the other day. It's on YouTube. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mike, I, 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 I hate to even say how much Haley I listen to. Um, <laughs> it's always popping up in my in my recommends there, and I nice. Like, oh, I don't know how am I gonna resist? Um, right. <laughs> so yeah, it's. Uh, I hear you. Yeah, and actually, uh, all three of those women, yeah, I uh, yeah, so I see their yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, man, just great stuff, great stuff. Uh, Very good. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I like. Uh, yeah. Right. So, have another tire issue. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. So, get tires March twenty third, twenty nineteen for the Ford Edge, right? Right. The tires I got were Gen General Ultima Ultimax RT forty three. Okay. Okay. They were rated to seventy five thousand miles. This is, you know, that's high. Mileage, you know. Right. Anyway, Zach calls me last night. He's coming home from work. Mom, my tire's low. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm going to have to pull over or whatever. I'm like, okay, I'll just call me if you have a problem, you know. He makes it home. Then I told him, I said, Zach, make sure you put air in that tire before you go to work tomorrow. You know, if there, there might be a leak in it. You need to find out, you right, know. Right, Yeah, I will, I will. Well, he didn't. Okay. So he's driving to work, and it gets flat. It's flat. Yeah. So he was able to pull off the, you know, he was on a main drag, but he was able to pull off off the main drag and go on, pull on the side or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mind you, it's fucking 10 degrees outside with the wind. It's like minus, it's like zero degrees outside, right? Yeah. Anyway, Matt didn't have to work today, so he's home. So he was able to go help Zach do whatever, you know, with the tire. Okay. Zach or Matt brought the, we have this floor jack in the garage, right? Uh -huh. One of those, you know, hydraulic floor jacks, you know? Right. On wheels and shit, you know what I mean? Anyway, he puts it, it doesn't work. The jack didn't work. You know why? Um, no. You don't know? Why I just jack... told you it's zero degrees outside. <laughs> okay. It doesn't work because it's too fucking cold out. Uh, yeah, you should have a scissor. So they... you, should have a scissor. you should have a scissor jack in there. Well, yeah, so they had to use that. Right. You know, just put the spare on or whatever. Because obviously, when they took the tire off, the, it it was a side, it was in the sidewall, and it, it was a bubble. You can see there was a bubble that popped, right? Yeah. So anyway, I call Affordable Tire where we got them. Because I told Zach, I said, call out there and see how much it is for used tires for this car, you know, because I can't get new tires for this car. Right. You know, and I didn't even think about any warranty or anything like that. You know, I was just like initial, like what to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I talked to the kid's dad. He's like, "There should be a warranty on those. You guys got those less than a year ago." So I I dig out the receipt. 
sure enough, you know when we got those tires? No. March twenty third, twenty nineteen. Oh yeah. They have yeah. they're not even a year old. Wow. So I called the guy at a Ford. This was be, but before I looked up, I knew all this. I called the guy at Affordable Tire and asked about the warranty on him. Like, I didn't really, you know, tell him it was a sidewall burst. I didn't tell him much. So Zach had already talked to these people earlier, right? Yeah. Anyway, I go, is there any kind of warranty on those tires? We just got those, you know, recently. Oh, no. He tried to, like, oh, you know, say there's no warranty. No. I go to General Tire website. There's a fucking warranty on them goddamn tires. Sure. You know, and so tomorrow I'm going to bring the tire in and show them the goddamn tire and say, hey, this is a bad tire. Then right. they're going to try to say, well, then we'll replace that tire. I'll say, no, 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 no. This is an all-wheel drive vehicle. I need all four new tires on this vehicle. Right. I mean, they they, they were what the deal they made, because they made an appointment for Monday, Mm -hmm. They were going to give me a new tire, a new Cooper, and then they had three used ones that were Coopers that are, like, brand new. Like, the new one has 11 and 32 seconds tread wear. Okay. And the the used ones have 10 and 32 seconds tread wear. Okay. So they're really close in tread wear, right? Yeah. Because with an all-wheel drive vehicle, you're supposed to have the same tread wear on all tires, right? Sure. So anyway, the guy doesn't tell. He's basically, you know, they want to they want to sell me new tires. They don't want to do the paperwork to go through the warranty process with General Tire. But too fucking bad. I went to General Tire website. They are an authorized dealer for General Tire. So General Tire is going to back them up on this, which they should because it's a defective tire, dude. Right. You know, I mean, seriously. It takes a lot for that to happen. Either the tire's defective or Zach hit a really deep pothole or something, right. which could happen, but not that much, where it's going to wreck the tire, a 75,000 rated tire. Yeah. You know what I mean? I right. mean, I know all tires are not foolproof, but... Are yeah, you, are no, you they, uh, they, they have to... They, 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 they have Hello? To, yes. You there? Hello? Hello? What just happened? I don't know. I hear you still. <laughs> What's going on? Let me check my wire here. Yeah, I'm still here. Still here. I hear you. <laughs> I can't. I I I can't hear you. T check your volume level. Are you talking? Because I cannot hear you. Check your volume. Check your volume. Volume thingy. Check my volume. Maybe I've muted. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, hello? I hear you now. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, it happens. It's a, it's a new yeah, headset. All right. So. Okay. Anyway, um, no, Mike, the valve would not make the tire get a side bubble and go flat. No, it's a bad tire. Yeah, bad tire. Um. <laughs> A valve would not. The valve would make the tire go low on air, but it would not. Would not put a fucking hole in the goddamn thing. Right. So anyway, it's like when they hear a woman on the phone, they automatically think you're stupid about tires and shit. You know what? I'm 53 years old, dude. I've had a lot of fucking vehicles and a lot of tire issues, so this is not my first fucking rodeo, and I am not stupid. <laughs> the, yep. So, I mean, okay, best case scenario. I go in there with the tire in my receipt from March 23rd, 2019, and I say, hey, this is what happened. Sidewall, side bubble, broke, bad tire, right? right? Oh, yeah, that's a warranty issue, no problem. All four new tires, no problem. We'll work it out with General Tire. That's the worst, best case scenario. Worst case scenario is they give me a bunch of crap about it. Right. If they do that, I'll be like, that's fine. This is not the last you've heard of me. And I will go put one of the other tires I have in my garage on this vehicle. But this is not the last you've heard of me because I will be contacting General Tire. Right. Because these are under warranty. 
Yeah, yeah, so you guys did not know that? For you guys to not know that these are under warranty? That's on you. You are an authorized dealer of General Tire. Right. It's no skin off their nose. I mean... No, get, it isn't. It's just paperwork that they have to do. They, of course they, get, they want to sell me four new tires. Who would... What dealership or what tire place wouldn't want to do that, right? Right, right. I mean, but no, dude. You, do you realize I just got these less than a year ago? Yeah. You know, this is a bad tire. And if they try to say it's something with the drive, tr- the suspension, or, or, or something with my, the car causing the tire to go bad, I'd be like, no, nope, because none, the other three aren't bad. Right. The other three are not bad. Yeah, they can say, they can say, oh, is there, you got a bent tie rod on that. On that I'll trail. be like, no, fuck you. <laughs> I'll be like, no, dude. No, 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 no. Because we had, when, when we got the tires the day after, we had the, um, I have it right here. It was the, we had this repaired. Right. Hang on, I got to dig it. No, we had, uh, it's right here. The uh, the left front outer tie rod yeah. and the lower back joint, the right front lower uh, back joint, ball joint. And is it is it the right front tire? No, it's on the rear. Oh, okay. Well, then you don't have so to have that's So they can't tell me that's the issue. They can't say, no, well, no, yeah, your yeah. suspension's fucked up. So it caused it. Because that's what they told me about the tires that were on the car before that. Yeah. Which I believed it because the tie rod and the ball joint were bad, right? Yeah, well, that's only on the front tires, though. So. Right. So I'm sick of getting ripped off. I'm going to go in there and be assertive. I don't give a fuck that I'm a woman. <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. And you're not going to fucking rip me off, dude. You're not going to fucking, no, no, you're not. Good. I mean, I, I will, con- I'm looking at the, the uh, my tires. I'll, I'll, I'll give you guys the link for the tires. It's, it clearly states 75,000 mile, and then there's warranty details. Yeah. All general passenger and light truck tires are eligible for the limited warranty and adjustment policy for a maximum of 72 months from the date of purchase. Right. The per- policy allows for free replacement during the first 12 months from the date of purchase over the first two and 30 se- two slash 30 seconds of wear. So I'm within the year time frame here. Yeah. It's March. It's February what, 14th. Yeah. I bought them on March 23rd, 2019. Okay, well. So I'm good, right? Yeah, you got in under the wire there. It says it right there. Yeah, you're good to go. And guess what? This was published on, well, it says 215, 20, oh, 2010, never mind. And it was updated on 215, 2019. Okay. Their warranty. Good. So you know what? I got that. You got it. I'm getting four new tires for the goddamn edge. There you go. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because I did buy four, and those, but then what if they try to say, well, only the one failed? I'll be like, that's that's not my problem. I have an all-wheel drive vehicle. I need all the same tread on all the tires. Yep. yep. Uh, you know? Yep. All right. So uh, here we go with the story. All right, then. Are you ready? I know I'm boring with my personal story. No, no, no. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. Are you ready for this? I, I, yes. Are you sitting down? I am. Feminist professor who practices a cult calls for human extinction to save the planet. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. (laughs) Patricia McCormack argues for phasing out of reproduction as the only solution to climate change. (laughs) Oh, my fucking God. We can't get away from this subject. No, it's everywhere. So on January, it is. On January 23rd, 2020, Blooms, Bloomsbury, and, I, and, I, and I, when I first read that, I thought, Doonesbury? No, no, Bloomsbury <laughs> Academic published a call to action for all those who care about climate change, a human manifesto, activism for the end of the Anthropocene by Patricia McCormick, a professor of continental phys- philosophy at Angela Ruskin University, uh, cuts to the chase and advocates for the ultimate solution to global warming, to end the end of the human race. Uh, 
Laura McCormick, Extinction Rebellion has a whole different meaning. Uh, she admits to being an occultist magician. She has actually given lectures, often in a get-up, that is either supposed to be emulating a witch or bearing an eerie resemblance to the costumes we frequently see at Drag Queen Storytime on the invocation or convocation of demons, which she says is an important feminist or queer practice. Uh, invoking demons, she says, is not entirely risk-free, you think? Uh, <laughs> because <laughs> madness... Fuck, is, and who writes this shit? Uh, this woman? Uh, mad, madness is likely as ecstasy. Um, she's a professor. She's teaching kids at schools. That that's who she is. She's <laughs> she's she's a, a lunatic. Fuck her. Uh, she's says, nobody. It says she is not the sort of weak. What is she an alien? She she is not the sort of weak kneed climate activist who believes we should save oh the planet for our children. God. In fact, she does not think there should be any more children. <laughs> 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 so, uh, oh my God! A researcher who has published in the areas of continental philosophy, feminism, queer theory, whatever that is, post-human theory, horror film, body modification, animal rights, abolitionism, sinosexuality, and ethics. There's a there's a resume for you. Uh, McCormick once argued that animals are equal to human beings. Now she's arguing that humans should get out of the way entirely. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, I'm not going to read any more of this, but uh, <laughs> you get her point. She wants you gone. She wants, if you have a child, you're a, you're a, there's something terrible, horrible wrong. Yeah, with you. fuck them. You, you, you are a bad person. Feminist, fuck you, feminist. <laughs> fucking <laughs> fuck off, all you feminists. Seriously, <laughs> you fucking did more harm than good. Okay. All right. Now I, I don't think she's hanging out with this next guy, but I think they're of a similar disturbed mindset that maybe they, <laughs> they ought to be. Florida man upset that he can't bring a. Life-size cutout of Donald Trump to dialysis. Oh, that poor man. <laughs> you poor thing. You motherfucking dumbass. There's <laughs> uh, <laughs> no wonder the you know, onion is struggling and stuff like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> we say it all the time. You cannot make this shit up. A Florida man undergoing kidney dialysis three times a week is upset that he can't bring a life-size cardboard... I'm upset, man! He, a life-size cardboard cutout of President Donald Trump for emotional support. Oh, my freaking God! Now, I, I don't know what's worse, getting emotional support from a life-size cardboard cutout <laughs> or the fact that that cutout is it's Donald pathetic. fucking Trump. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Dude, you obviously have no friends at no, all. Uh, apparently not, if you have to hang out with a cardboard cutout yes. of the Trump. Oh uh, my God, it's so pathetic. Uh, Nelson Gibson told WPBF that his family can't sit with him during his three and a half hour treatments. To right. help, to help, he began bringing, bringing a picture of Trump to comfort as a comfort item. It, oh. just, it just feels okay. like bringing something from home. Can't you just bring a little fucking picture of the that, guy, that dude? Well, you got to bring a whole cutout of him. That, that, I mean, come on, buddy. That, that's You're going it, to extremes here. That's how it started. He started bringing a picture. He oh, said, okay. So he wanted to see what he could get away with. And Gibson said no one complained about the photo. Next, he started bringing <laughs> a small cardboard cutout of himself. <laughs> Where's he getting oh, cardboard cutouts of Trump? A, car a cardboard cutout of himself standing next to a Trump photo. <laughs> no one complained. You guys are psycho. No one, no one complained about the small cutout, and Gibson told the station that some people <laughs> even took photos with it on oh sa my God. on Saturday. Gibson took a life-sized cutout of Trump to his treatment at Fresnius Kidney Care in, Saint, in Port St. Lucie. He said that, again, no one took issue with this new emotional support item. But when he returned Tuesday for treatment the, with the presidential cutout, 
he ran into oh a roadblock. God. That's a website forum, Graham. <laughs> That's a website for Donald Trump posters. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not surprised. Anyway, they told me it was too much, and this wasn't oh a rally. <laughs> So I want to puke. I gotta, I gotta mute. I gotta puke. <laughs> sure. I need a bucket. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. he says it, it was supposed to be an issue of safety, infectious disease, which made no sense. Uh, Eric Gibson said. Uh, the Gibson say they feel singled out, since the center typically encourages patients to bring emotional support items, life size cutouts, emotional of- support items. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, okay. I bring in my llama. Anyone have a problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Oh, my fucking God. So, so. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's upset. He is. He is. The Florida man is upset. He's, he is, he is oh, no. disturbed. He is disturbed. Yeah, I would say. And then we have this. Then oh. we have this little bit of wonderment coming out of the the great the great state of Alabama. Yeah, man. Now, recently, Alabama passed some kind of strange abortion restrictions. I, I don't know exactly what they were, but okay, it, they, it was some really strange stuff involved there. Okay. In response. To those abortion restrictions, an Alabama lawmaker would require vasectomies. Okay, <laughs> what require? I don't like that word. Require, require. an Alabama land of the free. Uh, and, I don't uh, like that word. An Alabama, I'm, being, I'm kidding. <laughs> an Alabama Democratic lawmaker has a has a unique response to a recent law limiting abortion rights in the state require men to undergo vasectomies either when they hit 50 or when they have three children. What? So oh, my a, God. Is this so, China now? Yeah, so it don't matter. Like 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 somebody like me. I never had kids. I, I never you planned on having You had to get a vasectomy, right? I, I would have had to get a vasectomy under this rule. Oh, my God. Yeah. Or, or if you had three children, you're not going to have four. Uh, so oh, wow. that would be the case under the new bill. What from, the fuck is happening? From Representative Rolanda Hollis that was introduced on Thursday. Under an existing law, there are no restrictions on the reproductive rights of men. This measure would require a man to undergo a vasectomy within one month of his 50th birthday or the birth of his third biological child, whichever comes first. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the bill faces long odds, as you can imagine, in the, uh, yeah. in the Republican-controlled legislature. But Hollis told AL.com, it's a statement in response to a near-total abortion ban passed in the state last year that has been blocked by a federal, federal judge. Republican-led states emboldened by the conservative majority Supreme Court and efforts by Trump administration to roll back abortion protections have pushed limitations uh, to abortions in the last year. The vasectomy bill is to help with the reproductive system. And yes, it is to neutralize the abortion man bill. It also, <laughs> it always takes two to tango. Uh, he, uh, Hollis told the outlet, we can put all the resp- can't put all the responsibility on women. Men need to be responsible also. <laughs> so under the bill, men who... Wow. Re- under the bill, men who reach the age threshold to have to undergo the vasectomy at their own expense. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Come on, meteor! <laughs> Get that meteor down here quickly. We need a media. <laughs> we, 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 oh we, my fucking we, god! We got we got feminist professors calling for human extinction. We got Florida men that can't bring their Donald Trumps to dialysis, and we got this woman requiring vasectomies for all men. <laughs> this is, this what is your, the fuck is happening? This is your world. <laughs> Not, I don't want it to be. All right, all right. 
Uh, we're going to play a full-on uh, request set here coming up. All right. We got requests from Kate. We got a request from Moose Girl. We got All a right. re- request from Hansel. Oh, weird. Weird combination. But... Brace yourselves. Okay. Yeah, brace, right. your, brace yourselves. Brace yourselves, everybody. <laughs> Could be a big one. All right, here we go. Kate, Miss Kate's request first. Dr. Right. John and Bobby Rush. All right, man. Yeah. <laughs> Drowning pool. Bodies for Hansel there. Yeah, Hans, that's a good one. I like that song, man. That's good stuff. Uh, somebody tell uh, Mike that the song is over. Uh, <laughs> There in the chat. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for that, man. Good stuff. Before that, Fort Miss Moose Girl, the awesome Marcus King with the swinging doors. There, yeah, Marcus. Uh, he, 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 knows, he knows his way around. Yes, indeed. And we kicked it off for Miss Kate there, Dr. John and Bobby Rush with a Blind Dog Smoking. Uh, another murder in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, some good music there. Uh, uh, you know, I, I I really like that song, Mike. I I don't I don't know what you don't like about it, but uh, <laughs> that's good shit. Oh man! So, yeah, man. Yeah, bodies. Yeah. I didn't really like it either. So. Well, we've played it here on on. on I know we have, but just for, the fact that Hans requested it, and I know his mindset, and it just didn't sit right with me. Oh uh, well. At the time. Uh, right after he requested that one, he requested another song that I just deleted from the list. <laughs> some, some, some 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 band called Three Doors Down. Oh God! Oh yeah, you don't like them. I know you don't like them. I know you don't like them. <laughs> that was not going to happen. Me too, Mike. I need bluegrass, dude. I need like yeah. I don't do the heavy metal and shit like that. I don't. I mean, I can listen to a little bit of it, but that's not my favorite genre at all. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You know, everyone has their different things, you know? It's fine. Sure, it's whatever. Sure. It's music. You know, it's what you're into. It's I'm good with it. Right, right. Just not my nice thing, you know, really, you know? Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> Every music is yeah. like, oh, what? I just put this in there the other day, and it's gone. No, I don't mind opera. I like some opera. I really do. I mean, it can really tug on your heartstrings, and it's just beautiful music, and I love, like, orchestra music. I mean, not all the time, you know. I'd love to go see the symphony, but I can never do it because I never have the money, and I would just love to go because they have a Chippewa Valley has where I live um, has a symphony, and I just want to go see them. Like, I really wanted to go to Nutcracker in December. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Not enough money. So, you know, it's because it's an extra thing. And it's like 20 It was like $30 or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I just didn't have the money at the time. So, no biggie. I'll, I'll, I'll make it, but. Right. I mean, I know I'm a nominee, I think. They do. Um, and I think even the Chippewa Valley Orchestra plays like one time a year in the summer, like in a park or something. Yeah. Which is probably free, so I could do that, and that would that would suffice, totally. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever have you ever been to a symphony like live, Grim? No. Really? A symphony? Yeah, a symphony orchestra. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Really? No, I don't think so. I mean, seriously, no wonder that that, that says a lot. It, it says a lot. <laughs> I'm <laughs> just kidding. Well, guys went down to- what was that? Oh, this video tried to start. Back That's okay. Back. Um, no, but um, I remember when I was a kid. I think I went. Tw- I've seen the symphony a few times in my life, like a full symphony orchestra, several times actually. Um, I've been to. I remember in grade school they took us to see the symphony one time. And then my parents, or my mom, or someone took me, I think it was my dad, actually, to Orchestra Hall in Minnesota, in Minneapolis. And I loved it, because you see all, it's really cool, dude. I mean, seriously, it's one thing to see a video of it, 
But it's another thing to like experience it, like in a in a in a hall. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's really cool. Like, it is really fucking cool. You know. Right. And then um, I went to. I've seen the Nutcracker Ballet performed, and it's maybe not a full orchestra, but they have they play the actual music while the ballet is going on. So that's kind of like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay. But if you've never been to a symphony orchestra, like a lot of times in a lot of play- cities, they have free, during the summer, they have free performances in the parks. Okay. I remember one time when my dad lived in Michigan, we were there visiting him this summer, and the, the symphony, like the Detroit Symphony, was in the park. Okay. And we went and saw him. I mean, it was awesome. Like, if you've never seen, I'm just saying, if you've never seen one, like, at a hall, you need, it's like a once, because it's so cool, dude. I mean, it's just, it's so cool. Like, even if you're not into that kind of music, it's really fucking cool. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, the only thing I've been to like that where it's, that kind of thing is, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, the uh, Phantom of the Opera. Oh, yeah, 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 a play. Yeah. Yep, because they have, they have an orchestra during plays. Yep, right. and ballets. Yep, sure. Yeah. And that was, I guess, it was supposed to be some big deal. I was like, well, really? it's a big deal because the music's being played live while this, it's going on. You know what I mean? Like everything's live. It's not like recorded music. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like everything's live. It just makes it so cool to me. It makes that's what makes it really cool. Yeah. Is that there's actual human beings playing the two? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like a recording. It's not you know, and they're right. They're sitting right there in the orchestra pit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just love that. That to me, I mean, I guess like I was that kind of kid though. Like I always wanted to be a performer. Like that seriously was when I was a kid. I wanted to be on Broadway. Like I wanted to be a dancer or a singer. Like maybe not like a, a hit number one singer, but in the background, like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Always, I wanted to be a part of it. You know what I mean? A part of the theater, or a part of um, movies or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I mean, that was just, that. you know, that was being a kid. But, you know, what kid doesn't, I mean, I'm sure you didn't, maybe not thought of that. But, you know, a lot of kids do dream of that. You know what Apparently, I mean? Apparently, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I used to have one of, the, one of the best Christmas presents I got, or I got a present for some occasion, was a record player. Mm-hmm. Like, my first record player I think I ever got, I was so stoked. Dude. <laughs> I was like eight or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's when we had those 45s, you know? Sure. You could just go down to fucking record land or whatever they called it, music land. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those days? Yeah. Yeah, we had. Uh, you ever? Had, oh, go ahead. We, we had Licorice Pizza. That was the big. Uh, oh, okay. That was the big record store. All right. Do you ever have flashbacks from um, your past, like uh, from your youth, from when you were a kid, or just just random shit from the past? Uh, I guess. No. What do you mean you guess? It's like a yes or no. Yes, well, I, I have. Or I, no, I, I have not. I remember stuff. I don't know if I call it a flashback. Okay, that's what I mean. Like, you remember stuff. <laughs> like, that. yeah, you remember memories from your past. I mean, basically, I call it a flashback, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm saying you remember your memories from your, like, certain things that happened in your life. You remember them, right? Yeah. Yeah. But do, have you noticed that the more you get older, like, you 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 find yourself, like, re- having these memories pop into your head randomly. Like, like a couple times lately, I'm just like, why the fuck did I think of that all of a sudden? Or why do I remember that day out of all the days that I've had? Why do I remember that one? You know what I mean? Yeah. Isn't that weird? I guess, you know, whatever, something triggers it. Uh... Right, like you, <laughs> so, a smell or a song, like a song or a smell. Right. Can anything. trigger a memory, you know? Anything. You know, I, I, it happens all yeah. the time, you know, like when I'm sitting here talking to people in the chat, somebody will say something. And it'll yep. be like, there'll be a combination of words that it'll bring right. up. And, and usually it brings up, uh, you know, a, a movie or music or something to me. Right, yeah. And uh, and so I'll share that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you, know, people, you have these random, like, memories pop into your head at weird times, like, like the other day, I'm like, why did I think of that? 
I mean, right, why right. did I even remember that? You know what I mean? Sure. It's just like weird, you know? Yeah. There must be some significance to it. Like certain memories you hang on to and certain ones you don't. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's just this way it goes. I, I mean, think it just comes with age too. I think you get like you start to get like sentimental or something. Probably. You know what I mean? And a little that, bit like, that, oh, I wish I was young again. <laughs> you yeah, know. There, there, there's, there's probably. You know, a, you start what? So there is probably a degree of that in there, sure. Right, like you start thinking, oh, what's if you did? What would have happened if I would have not made that choice or made the choice? You know what I mean? Well, think of it this way. Mm-hmm. There are infinite timelines, and one version of you made the choices you made. Right. Not, another version, and many other versions, went off down mm-hmm. separate other timelines. Because right. when you decided to take that left turn, they turned right. At that right. Place. But, okay, so, with your theory, okay, what is, what is, you say you, what is, what is it? What is what? What am I? You're you. What? But what is it? I don't really is know. it a human? Would you call it a yeah, human? Yeah, would you yeah, call sure. it That's a it. spirit? Would you call it, 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 it an it, entity? It would be no would different. Would you call it just a, a player in a fucking game? An avatar? I mean, well, it, you know what I mean? That's what do you, what is it? What What are we? What am I? If you say you, <laughs> well, you are on infinite, time, infinite timelines. Okay, so <laughs> what am I, though? Like, obviously, I'm not a human. Like, right now, when I'm on well, this timeline, I am. Yeah. None of us are human. And right now I am in this timeline. Well, look, none of us, none of us. But I could be something else in another timeline. Yeah, right? but you're, but you're all of them. <laughs> but, but you're, 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 you're all but of them. But what is it though? Okay, so okay, might say you, it's a being. Okay, yeah, you are a you, being. You are. But what does it look like? You are your your whatever you want to call it. Your spirit self. Your your soul. Okay, spirit. That's your, what I'm looking for. That's your, what I'm looking your soul. Your well, call it call it whatever you want. It's it's the real being of you. And you're okay. out there, and you are, you have made all the various possible decisions you could possibly make. So I picture it being a, a bright light, like a star. I picture I picture myself that being as being a light. Okay. A very like a star, like that bright of a light. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's what I am, like at home before I. I'm here on this planet. Like, this is not my original home. Like, I'm visiting here. All right, well, aren't we all? You know, from where <laughs> I was. What? <laughs> I'm in this meat suit, and, you know, however long it lasts me is how long it lasts me, you know? Exactly. And I'm here to, you know, do what I can to enjoy well, the time I have here, I guess. That's all it's for. <laughs> You're just here to have a good time. Right, you know, I mean, you're not, you're you know, really, that's what I signed up for. Have a good time. <laughs> nothing else. Nothing else. It hasn't really. always been a good time, but yeah, I know. But, you, know. you know, nothing else really matters. You, right? You, you, you get, know, who, who, it's like you know. fuck it, <laughs> have fun. At, at the end of it all, whoever's enjoyed themselves the most, they're the winners. Right. I think that's true. I think that's the case. I think you know, we all get wrapped up in the stresses, like. I was stressing a little bit about the tire today, and I was getting all stressed up. And it doesn't even fucking matter. No, no, no. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, none of it matters, really. You know, you're just here. You're here right now. Yes, you are. Having an experience, and, you know, you're in this timeline, you're a human. Or you experience, you experience what it's like to be a human on Earth right now, in this timeline. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Another timeline, you could be on fucking something like the Battlestar Galactica. Cool. You know, fucking <laughs> ride with fucking Chewbacca or something. You know, like Chewbacca, like a Wookiee, like Chewbacca. Rawr! You know, however, I can't do a Chewbacca impersonation. I've tried through the years. Uh, my Chewbacca impersonation sucks so bad that I cannot even attempt it anymore. Maybe like, you can do a Leia. Like, don't do. Oh, yeah, I can do that. I can do Princess Leia. Okay. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> See, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope. See, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> no, I know. <coughs> Help us, Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm terrible. I know it sucks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're I not... cannot do impersonations. Like I shouldn't even attempt impersonations. I actually, I can do a good um, Marge Simpson. 
You could probably you could probably do a good Janice. I can do a good Marge. <laughs> You, you I can do a good Janice when yeah. I sing. I can sing me and Bobby McGee no, pretty good. I mean, you know, Not like, exactly like Janice, uh, but... No, 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 no. Okay, think, think of this. The, at the very beginning of Mercedes-Benz, yes. she, she does that little thing. She says that, that laugh. Thing. No, she says that little thing. Do you know what she says? I can't even think of it right now. I, this, is, this is a song of great social importance. Uh, yeah, you great remember? social and political importance or something. Yeah, yeah, you could you could do that little part right there. I could. I and, probably and could nail, do that. You could nail that. You got the right voice for that. Yeah, exactly. Me and Janice <laughs> got about the same kind of voice, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, but at both in Bluegrass, I was singing, and they wanted me to keep singing. Yeah. So, to me, that means something. I mean, to me, that was like a win. Oh, they were, they were getting it all up there for the YouTubers. Well, no, I don't know if it was on YouTube, but, I mean, we were just <laughs> jamming songs, just singing along. Like, it was a group yeah. thing, you know. It wasn't yeah. just me singing. It was, you know. <laughs> but no one said, oh, you need to shut up. You sound so terrible. <laughs> no one said that. Yeah. So I'm assuming it sounded all right. <laughs> yeah, it probably did. Yeah. Yeah, probably did. <laughs> That's what I like to tell myself, anyway. Yeah. You know. Right. I like to sing. I, you know, what can I say? Even if it doesn't sound good, I still like to do it. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I understand completely. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, now since I and I meant to do this right after the last set, but we got okay off on other things. But uh, okay, we played bodies. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the yeah, floor. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I meant to cover these coronavirus stories right after. Oh that. no! Oh, <laughs> do really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now the first one. Uh, it's on Daily Mail, and and it says what it's like to get coronavirus. <laughs> okay. Student from Wuhan, or as I'll say it, Wuhan, uh, <laughs> re- re- reveals his three-week ordeal, including 102 degree Fahrenheit fever, pains in every part of my body, and a cough so bad I thought I would die. So this guy, he's 21. He's a, he's a student uh, over there in Wuhan. Uh, he, and he had the infection. He had the 102 degree fever, pains in every part of his body, coughing. Yeah. So it mm-hmm. says a coronavirus survivor has lifted the lid on what it's like to contract the killer disease, including a soaring temperature, pains, and a cough so bad he thought he would die. The 21 year old student, uh, uh, going under the pseudonym Tiger Yi, said he first noticed symptoms on January 21st while at home in Wuhan. A ground zero for the disease. Yi said that the first signs he was ill came when he was too weak to finish his dinner and noticed he had a raised temperature. With news of the potentially lethal virus spreading, Yi took himself to the city's Tongji Hospital to get tested, only to find a waiting room filled with dozens of other people and also feared they were infected. Uh, facing an hours long wait, Yi said he went to another hospital to get some medication that he thought might help before quarantining himself at home. Speaking about the first four days of il- his illness to Bloomberg, he said, I suffered from a high fever and pains uh, that tortured every part of my body. I was coughing like I was going to die. After four days, he went back to Tongji for a follow-up appointment where some CT scans revealed that he likely had coronavirus that had spread to his lungs. But medics refused to give him a test that would confirm whether or not he had the virus because they were running low on kits and his symptoms were not severe enough. He was sent home to self-isolate a second time when his symptoms suddenly worsened. He said his temperature soared to 102 degrees, and he thought uh, he was knocking on hell's door. The hospital finally admitted him, giving him antiviral drugs to bring his temperature down in a test, which confirmed he had the virus. After uh, his symptoms began easing, they sent him back home with another course of medication because they were running out of beds. Okay, it goes on and describes more and all that, but let me tell you. Mhm. Or ask, I guess. You've had the flu, right? Yep. Does it sound any different? No. I mean, 
Okay, 102 no, degree not. fever. We've all had 102, 103, Yeah, I've had 102 degree. fever before. Actually, fever is the body's way of fighting infection. Right, you've had 100. you guys forgot that part. 104 degree fever, you were probably vomiting and diarrheaing and, yeah. and coughing. Yeah, I said fever is the body's way of fighting infection. And, you, and you, I mean, basically, it felt like you were going to die um, right. at some okay, point. Okay, so people get freaked out about a fever, but unless it's really super high, like above 104... Right. Um, fever is your, way, your body's way of fighting infection, and virus is an infection. I mean, it, viruses, wait, antibiotics can't treat viruses. Okay, but see what they've done so here, the, what they've done here by, by bringing about this uh, epidemic, I gotta fuck that a, 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 by bringing about this epidemic or pandemic or what, whatever they want to call it, because people, right. cause, cause people are basically getting the flu. Um, they haven't called it a pandemic yet, but... Well, they've called it at least an epidemic. Uh, so, right, right. So because of that, all these people are flocking down to these, these hospitals and medical centers. And they, exactly. And, and they can't be treated. They can't be tested. They can't no. be... Uh, they, they won't give them anything. They won't even look at them unless they're falling down dying. Right. <laughs> Which, which they've done this to themselves. They've created they this have. mess, this nonsense. Uh, because I mean, this yep. is this is no worse than any other flu. It, it's, right. It's just a it's just a thing that that happens. And, exactly. And, and the the people you know healing from it are a much higher number than those that are not healing from exactly. it. Exactly. But they just have to fear monger us, dude. Right. Because so, they want to fucking make some vaccine. They want to scare you into fucking injecting you with toxic shit. That's how they get you. That's how they get a lot of people. Not yeah. you, but a lot of people. Yeah, well, that's the same. I mean, Mike, yeah. Mike says, look at the bright side. They're immune to the coronavirus until it mutates. That's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing about right. a virus. Viruses are continually mutating. Exactly. Uh, they they are. are. And that's why they're so hard to, like, control because antibiotics don't Touch viruses, only infection. Right. Okay, yep. another, another thing that happened um, uh, because of the coronavirus, hours of misery in coronavirus lockdown at Heathrow. Right. At Heathrow. Uh, passengers, passengers tell uh, how family of eight from Malaysia. Weeks, right? What? Two weeks, right? Well, they weren't on the, they weren't on the, on the tarmac all that time. But, no, but uh, passengers tell how family of eight from Malaysia were screened off by staff in hazmat suits aboard one of eight flights quarantined on simultaneously. They had eight planes in lockdown out there on the tarmac. So uh, British Airways flight from Kuala Lumpur was held up on the tarmac for two hours uh, it, when it landed at 645. Health workers in hazmat suits came on board uh, and, and set up a privacy tent around the family of eight. Uh, United Airlines 901 from San Francisco was locked down until 9 a.m. this morning. Uh, sources say delays at the airports have become, a have become a daily occurrence due to enhanced measures against the virus. Uh, Captain re reportedly told passengers they were there was a suspected case on board of theirs and seven other planes. Uh, London has been on red alert for more cases. After at first confirmed diagnosis announced on Wednesday, almost 65,000 patients around the world, it's been oh, much higher than that, uh, have caught the virus. Nearly 1,400 have died, almost all in China. Um, so a anyway, so all these different planes came in from all these different places, and they put them all on lockdown. And they, put, they held all these people up. And and they're it's, it's, it's they're really they're really going insane on this stuff because I'll tell you what they're not they're not keeping it in check there there's no way no they're not it, it, it's just not happening um, right I it, like what Donna said you like Donna Graham I like Donna two but, people out there no I know you like her two people out oh, there. oh yeah way too way too people out there <laughs> Freaking, I like that Pe two people -like. freaking humans. It's two people you got there. I'm not going out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then That's we, cute, Donna. That's cute. And then we have this, which may be the real culprit uh, behind the whole thing. Okay. China has ground to a halt. On the, on, on, yes. the, on, on the ground, indicators confirm worst case scenario. So what this basically has to deal with is the fact that 
everything, I mean, everywhere, pretty much, comes from China. Parts for stuff. Yeah. All, all kinds of clothing. Exactly. I thought about this before you even, you know, I thought about this like two weeks ago. I'm like, what about all the shit that we get from China? Yeah. Clothing, food. The, 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 the U.S. gets from China. Uh, everybody. Everybody the whole world gets. Right. Yeah. From China. And 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 they're and they're locking it all down. It's it's ground to a halt. And is this a a a way of demonetizing the Chinese, of ruining the Chinese? And of course, everybody else is going to suffer uh, because everybody else is totally dependent upon Chinese production exactly. of so many things. But this could be a way to do a shift because you know China was has been building up. Uh, its economic strength in recent years and uh, it challenging the petrodollars. Uh, and and this this could certainly be a thing of, of where... Yeah, it could be. It uh, could be like, yeah, I hear you, dude. Yeah, so this, this whole... I thought article, about that. It's a good long article. It's got a bunch of charts and graphs and stuff in it talking about uh, cool. the various things here. Um, uh, Morgan Stanley suggested the real-time measurements of Chinese pollution levels would provide a quick and dirty, no pun intended, way of observing if China's major metropolises had returned back to normal. So that's just like another way of saying, well, we can tell whether they're manufacturing or not by how right. much, by how much pollution is is no longer floating oh, around. Oh really? In the oh air. my god! Because yeah, because yeah, right, I mean, right. a lot of those cities in China are really disgusting. Yeah, like, they are because they have air. so much manufacturing. Oh yeah, and, and, and yeah, I mean, oh my god, they, they you can only imagine. Right? That's why they, that's why they walk around with masks every day, not even when they're sick. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, the air is so shitty, dude. <laughs> right. It's just like the it's just like L.A. in the seventies or something, you know. Yeah. I mean, or smog, you know, and all this shit. I mean, not that we don't have it now. Now they're spraying chemtrails on us. You know, oh, it's right. like, hey, you know, yeah. well, it, you can't win. It's the Third Reich, dude. The Nazis run the world. Yeah. So. And the queen is their, the queen is their fucking bitch. Yeah, this actually right out of the, right out of the, the crackdown central Wuhan. They're still flying. Right. Flights, flying flights out of there, but, uh. Uh, the people aren't going to work. Uh, I, no, I, I, I mean everything. I mean, what do you? You got. I mean, this is like it's bad over there. I'm sure if no one's working, everyone's at home, just worried. Do people have enough water to drink? Do they have enough food to eat? I mean, yeah. Anyway, they, they have to a, fight. You know, to fight the flu, you got to keep hydrated. You know, they, have, they, have, they, they have a chart here showing um, uh, in, energy consumption. Uh, and and what's happened there, and because of the, okay. because of the loss of manufacturing, uh, where where it's dropped from, uh, I don't know what this number is here, like 110 something, and it's dropped down to less than 60. So about you know not even well about half, about half of of where it was uh, as far as their energy usage is going on there, the coal usage, the uh, uh, electricity being produced because. They're not doing it because there's nobody there's nobody producing anything. So right, and see this, the, you know, all these people that moved all their businesses to China, and Mexico, and all these other places, you know, take, took them out of the U.S. for whatever reason because of the tax breaks or whatever the fuck, cheaper labor, blah blah blah. Right. You you know you should be kicking your fucking cells right now. Anyway, so you may you may want to look forward further through this year to some severe economic disruption. Yes, it's going to be bad. So, so because because how how long is this shit going to go on? They don't even know. They don't uh, know. Or, well, they they probably know, but they're not saying. Right. Um, <laughs> they're not going to tell you. No, they're not telling yeah. you. Shit. So there, uh, there was a there was a little lull in the in the infection rate earlier this week. Right. And, and the stock market bumped up like, "Ooh, they've got they've got a they've got a lid on. It. They've got a idea what's going on so the stock market bounced back into action and then they said the next day ah oh, uh, false alarm no it's it's the numbers are still climbing and and then I, I don't know how they did it but uh china one day this week earlier this week uh decided to change the way they were counting deaths i was like what do you mean what, <laughs> what, what, what do you mean by that <laughs> i don't know but whatever it did it, it bumps the numbers up a good percentage um uh, because they decided, I, I don't know, maybe they weren't including some people, and they decided to include those people. I, I, I don't really get exactly how it worked, but uh, 
<laughs> oh, a little crazy, a little crazy. Crazy fucking nuts, shit. Anyway, dude. so yeah, let the bodies, let the bodies hit it's the floor. It's so fucking insane. It's just, I, I, you know, we've been what eleven years now. I thought it was longer, but you said eleven, so I'll go with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the 12, boys are 19. RLM has been in existence. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. yep. RLM has been in existence for 12 years. Okay. Um, and so we started the We first started year, after though. that because we were still on bold voices at that time. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, okay. Um, anyway. Uh, still, that's over 10. That's over a decade. Chris. It's over a decade. Over a decade of we freaking. We fucking rock, dude. We've been we're freaking. We've been ball, baby. <laughs> You know it. Yeah. It's still going strong. All right. Well, let's play. Let's play another set here. Uh, longer than AJ. Longer. Well, AJ's still all there, but longer yeah. than fucking Rush Limbaugh. We should be getting the fucking no way, medal of freedom. L- no, we don't want their fucking medals. We hate them. We don't L- want them. Limbaugh, Limbaugh's been there 35, 40 years, man. Right. Okay. So no, we don't. Care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to, you know. Yeah, I know. I know. Pump up, pump up right. the volume. Remember yeah. That <laughs> All right, we're gonna play. Right, another, enjoy, people. We're gonna play another set here. Uh, All right. It's gonna be an interesting set. I, I couldn't the the, the the song that I had found the other day and put up here is no longer there. I found a different Uh-oh. version of it. Um, okay. And and the reason I, I wanted to do that version is because of uh, this guitarist they picked up in 2003, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, uh, who who replaced Eric Bloom, uh, and and, and uh, his his name is Richie Castellano. Okay, so I don't know how it's gonna go. In right. I don't know how it's gonna go in this video, but in that one, uh, Richie Castellano comes out and he plays an awesome uh, solo. Okay. And then Buck Darma says, "Hold my beer." <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So hopefully they do that in this video too. Uh, either way, here, here we All go. Right. Then okay. came the last days of May. All right. Uh, that was very nice there. Uh, the Marcus King with Billy Strings uh, playing in a guitar shop somewhere. Um, uh, doing I'm a Lonesome Fugitive. Carter's Vintage Guitars. That's the guitar shop they're in. All right. So good stuff, man. As a Musco request. Before that, we had uh, Richie Castellano uh, playing Bohemian Rhapsody cover. And he plays all the parts, sings all the parts, harmonizes with himself. Uh, plays the piano, the bass, the drums, uh, lead guitar, uh, all everything. It was just, it was just amazing uh, thing that he put together there. Uh, Bohemian Rhapsody cover, Richie Castellano. Uh, check it out. Richie Castellano, by the way, is the uh, second lead guitarist, I guess you could say, uh, with Blue Oyster Cult. Um, he, they picked him up back in like 2003, and uh, Eric Bloom was off doing whatever. He was doing, but uh, Buck Dharma is a guitarist there. Anyway, we kicked it off there with uh, then came the last days of May on uh, the Rock Legends cruise back in 2013. So yeah, man, that's some, that's some music's right there for you. Yeah, baby. Oh <laughs> yeah, baby. I'm all stoked now. <laughs> Moose uh, you played the Billy Strings and the Marcus King requests. Enough yeah. said. I mean, come on. Yeah, I you made my night. <laughs> Plus, you played the Marcus King solo earlier, which I did was that a really too. good song too. Right? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Okay, if I become president, cannabis is free. Okay. Like it's it's free. I will release it from any restraints on it whatsoever. All that right. would be my first thing to do. Okay. For sure. And get rid of the fucking FDA. Absolutely. Fuck them bastards. And get the rid of them. They don't even we don't even need them fuckers. Really? We don't need them. Yeah, no, yeah. we don't need them bitches. No. They yeah. they're just they're, I call them the Federal Death Agency. Yeah, get rid of the DEA no. too. Get rid of the Federal Death Agency. Get rid of the Death Enforcement Agency. The DEA. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them bastards. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. Absolutely. <laughs> Fuck them. Oh god. They're assholes, they're bastards, they're murderers. Okay? Yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, there you go. And liars. And liars. Illinois. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Illinois. Don't even get me started on Illinois. 
Just kidding. I do like Chicago, okay? I don't hate Chicago. I love Chicago. I saw the Grateful Dead four times in Chicago at Soldier Field. Uh-huh. I've been to Chicago. I flew the first airplane ride I took. My grandparents took me on an airplane ride from Minneapolis to Chicago. It was like a 45-minute plane ride, but I thought it was cool as shit, and I was scared because I was like 10 years old or 12 or something. Yeah. And it was awesome. We went to the museums there and shit. This was back in the fucking 70s, okay? Right. Like, I'm old. All right. Well, yeah, like, yeah. I'm not ancient, but I'm, you know, fairly old. I'm, you know, whatever I am. You're not, anyway, a, you're not a spring chicken. My son, Matt, thinks says I'm a teenager. My son, Matt, says I act like a teenager. And I'm, I, I'm like, whatever, dude. I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm glad I act like that. It's all about attitude, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It is. It's all about attitude. I do not classify. I'm like, like tonight, I'm like, you act like a teenager. I'm like, oh, oh, so how am I supposed to act? Like, am I supposed to act how you think I'm supposed to act? No, I'm not going to act how you think I'm supposed to act. I'm going to act how I fucking want to fucking act because I'm goddamn old enough. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fuck you in your opinion. Don't be telling me how I'm supposed to fucking act. Absolutely. Oh, oh, you're this age, so you're supposed to be this way. Uh, I don't fucking think so, buddy. I don't fucking think so. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, all your friends are way younger than you, Mom. I'm like, they're not way younger. They're like in their 30s or 40s. Like, um, you hang out with teenagers. I'm like, no, I do not hang out with teenagers. All the people you hang out with are younger than you. I'm like, that's because they're cool. Because the people that are my age and are like mainstream suck. They're boring. Right. You know, why do I want to hang out with that? Yeah. Sucky and boring. No, that doesn't work for me. Absolutely. And I don't really judge people on age. You know what I mean? Sure, sure, sure. Age is just a fucking number. Right. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, no, no doubt about it. So it's all about, I keep telling the boys, it's all about attitude. Like Matt the other day, he's like, oh, I want to fucking die. I'm like, dude, that's not real. That's not cool to feel that way all the time. Every person my age feels this way, mom. We just want to fucking die. I'm like, dude, that's not true. No, no it is. Ask that. Ask that, man. You know, when me and my friends greet each other, we're saying, they say, how's it going? We respond with, we just want to die. I'm like, dude, that's not right. I'm like, that's not cool. You know? Right. I'm like, that is not normal. Oh, all the people my age feel that way. I'm like, no, they don't, Matt. No, 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 no they don't. That's not true. God. It's like, suck, you're fucked up, dude. That's yeah, what I told him. I told him he's fucked up. I told him he's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I talk to my kids real, though. I don't like pussy foot around, you know? Sure. And that is an old phrase. No one even says that anymore. What? Pussyfoot? Yeah. No one even says pussyfoot around anymore. <laughs> Nowadays, they'd be like, pussy, oh, that's a sexual term. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, oh, go ahead. Were you going to say something? <laughs> no, I got a couple stories to, to close out here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> a, couple, a couple of what story? What? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, first story from the Daily Mail. Uh, Kenyan husband, Kenyan husband, attempted to seal up his wife's sexual organs with super glue because he... Oh, be my God. That's so cruel. Because he believed she was having four affairs. Ick. Oh, okay. This says nuts. So na thing. named locally as Dennis Bumo, 36... He claims he discovered his wife's infidelity. He allegedly tried to seal her genitalia with glue before heading to Rwanda. Yeah. Uh, Momo was arrested and told police he applied the glue to salvage his marriage. Uh, his lawyer, Momo's lawyer, is asking that his wife receive 100 lashes for her, her alleged adultery. So anyway, the, uh, the Kenyan has been allegedly attempted to seal his wife's pussy with super glue because he believed she was having affairs. Um, he said whenever he left his hometown of Kitui on business, he claims his wife was arranging to meet with other men. Uh, before his last reported business trip to Rwanda, he is accused of applying super glue to the unnamed woman. Is this his wife? So Mrs. Mumo, I guess. Um, 
to her genitalia, leaving her in excruciating pain and requiring medical attention. Uh, news of the incident shocked the residents, and Mumo was arrested by the police. He confessed to the incident and told the officers he did it to save his marriage. Really? Do you think gluing up your, your wife's pussy is going to save your marriage? <laughs> <laughs> no, what? The guy's nuts. He needs to be, uh, like, put down. Like, he's psycho. He's, he's insane. He's schizophrenic. But I don't. I don't think it's that that uncommon. In or Canada. drunk, or a drug addict. He's I, I, he's he's fucked up in some way. But obviously, I, but I, I, when a normal person just breaks up with somebody and says we're done, I, I don't. You know, I don't you don't fucking, or you just fucking say fuck you. I'm done with you. You don't fucking go. Oh, I'm gonna stay married to you. Even you're, I think you're fucking for other people. It, it it's fucking nuts. It doesn't make sense. Well, I, I don't. I think. I think. Oh, well, this is Kenya. Well, they have Kenya. they have weird shit down there in Africa, That's you know. What I'm I think they, I think it's a little different down there. Yeah, it, it's um, way different down there, yeah, like no, way. That's, that's yeah. Nice. That's what I was getting. Like there. women are not regarded highly at all. Right. In a lot of places, because they're looked down upon. It, it's like it was here, you know, and still is here. I mean, but you know, there's so much fucking. I don't understand how it got to be this way. Like, I do in so, a lot of ways because I'm, like, a psychology freak. But uh -huh. um, the hatred and just the, the – some people will think it's just okay to be mean. Yeah. It's okay yeah. to be a dick. It's like, uh, where did that come from? Like, where did that mindset come from? Like, I am, I'm not like that. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, if you hold the door open for me, I don't give a shit. <laughs> what color you are, or how old you are, right, right, or, you know, I don't care. It means you're a kind person. Sure, sure. And that's how I. That's how I judge people. Yeah. You know, right, I don't me, judge well, people well, on their appearance. Let, let me let me ask you a question. How are you feeling? Ask away. How how are how you? Am I fe fe how are you feeling? Fine. In general, you're not no sicknesses, no illnesses. No, no. I'm knocking on wood now because you said it. And you've been good for a while. I've been good for a while. Yeah. I, I, I think I think I may know why. Anybody in in the chat that's not feeling well, or raise your hand, or or, or, or speak or, up, or call out the chat, or has periodic illnesses, may want to give this a listen, a close listen. Right. I mean, I personally feel well, and I felt well most always. I mean, for many many years, you know, twenty thirty years, and maybe this is why. I don't know. Masturbation boosts your immune system, helping you fight <laughs> off, <laughs> helping you fight off infection and illness. <laughs> Can an orgasm a day really keep the doctor away? I believe that. <laughs> so I believe that. According to this article, so get your shit out, even if you're single. According, you know, if you're a woman, get a bob. If you're a man, I don't know what you do. Just yeah, use your hand. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so this is all posted <laughs> on big, BigThink.com. Achieving orgasm through masturbation provides a rush of feel-good hormones such as dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin and can re rebalance our levels of cortisol, a stress-inducing hormone. This helps our immune system function at a higher level. The surge in the feel-good hormones also promotes more relaxed and calm state of being, making it easier to achieve a restful sleep, which is a crucial part in maintaining a high-functioning immune system. Just as bad habits can slow your immune system, positive habits such as healthy sleep schedule and an active sex life, even if it's all by yourself, uh, can help boost your immune system, which can prevent you from becoming sick. How masturbation affects your brain. Orgasms are very common, a very common human phenomenon. Let's hope so. The physical and mental health benefits have reached or been researched frequently as a result, and yet there is still much to be learned about how our bodies and brains react to the chemicals and hormones released during and after experience, experiencing this type of sexual release. The amount of speculation versus actual data on both functions and value of orgasm is remarkable explains Julia Hyman. That's really your name? All right. <laughs> Director of Kinsey Institute for Research in Sex, uh, Gender, and Reproduction. 
Masturbation causes. I would have changed my name by now. Yeah. I would have changed my name. I would not have that last name Hyman. <laughs> and it was, I just would not. It, it, Even if it's spelled H I G H M A N, I still don't want that name Hyman. It's it's spelled H E I H E I M A N, not H Y. But regardless, <laughs> uh, masturbation causes a rush of dopamine, which is a chemical that is associated with our ability to feel pleasure. Along with a rush, of, <laughs> a rush of dopamine that is released during an orgasm, there's also a release of a hormone called oxytocin, which oxytocin is, is which, a shit, dude. which is ah. com commonly referred to as the love hormone. Yeah, man, oxytocin's <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> this, 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 I'm sure I'm this, this it's true, though. It's true. It's it's a real thing. Yeah, it, 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 is, it, is, it is. It is. This concoction of chemicals does more than just boost our mood. It can also play a role in decreasing stress and promoting relaxation. Oxy Hell yeah! Oxytocin <laughs> decreases cortisol, which is a stress it's a hormone. stress hormone. That See, is, I knew that. I already knew it's that. It's usually present in high volumes during times of anxiety, fear, yes. panic, or distress. I had a lot of cortisol running through my system today. Not an extreme amount, a minor amount, but still, it fucks you up. You're like, why? Why? Why stress me out today? <laughs> You're like, you ask the universe, what the fuck? Yeah. You're like, oh, come on. Really? Mas masturbation yeah. boosts your immune system. It, there and you go, raises, people. Raises and your you know what? In this day and age of chemtrails and radiation sickness and cancer and all this other shit, you got to do it. And raises your yourself. white blood cell count. you got to do it to protect yourself, people. All right. Well, the article goes on. There's yeah. more information in there. Um, and so if, keep doing it. Do keep it. Doing good out do, there. It, do it until your palms yeah, you are know what? Raw. You don't want to dry up anyway. you got to use it or you lose it. You know there what I'm you saying? Go. <laughs> you got to use it or lose it. So you don't want to lose that part of yourself. So you, you know what? Not. You keep going on. Yeah. You're fine. You're doing no wrong. You're doing, actually, you're benefiting yourself. Oh, Sex God. is beneficial for you, personal. <laughs> you know, it is. I mean, come on. It's true. Yeah, yeah, it is. So anyway, we got to do our last set here. All right. Uh, well, we'll Ooh, be it's right that time already. Oh my God, we've been babbling that long. We okay. have, we have. Wow. Okay. Uh, th this is somebody called the Rolling Stones. Somebody them. Yeah. They're playing in Minneapolis, so I can't go see them because. Yeah, if you want. Oh yeah, Larkin Poe there, Larkin Poe. Uh, doing their version, of, or one of their versions of Black Betty. Anyway, I got a couple others by them as well. Uh, them sisters, crazy stuff. Before that, Mr. Billy Blaze with Sink. Yeah, that's uh, September 16th, 2008, he put that out. And we kicked it off there with the Rolling Stones. You can't always get what you want. That's that's it. That's it. So I think that's it. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, let me remind yep. everybody, once again, we have reached our fundraising goal uh, for Real Liberty Media for 2020. However... You can donate any time and all the time if you want. Just you know, just keep on putting it in there. We'll, we we need yeah. money. We need money for other things, for hardware, for all kinds of stuff. Uh, so yep. feel free donate if you enjoy the stuff that's coming out on Real Liberty Media. Please, please feel free to donate. But we did reach our goal, so no worries there on that. Um, what else? Anything else? Uh, I can't think of anything. Just survive the week, people. You know, uh, live your best life. Be you. Be your authentic self. Yep, yep. And Love it. Check out the schedule on real. <laughs> check out the schedule on RealLibertyMedia dot com for all of the shows that come up throughout the week here on RLM Radio. And uh, yeah, baby. Those. And let me just say before I go. Yeah. I, I really like gummies. Really, I do too. Certain kinds of gummies. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so we, feel free to donate those. Yeah, no, no, go no, ahead. Yeah, you know, yeah. just donate those uh, if you feel free. <laughs> uh, PM us for our addresses. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Peace. Okay, peace.